What's up everybody, Volin here in Pursuit of Art. Thank you guys so much for last week's response. You guys seem to really be liking these videos. All the comments that I get, they may not be a lot, but all of them are precisely the things that I want to hear. People are saying that they've been struggling with this stuff for a long time, that they can't get it from anywhere else. And that's why I like making these. I like making these videos because they don't just apply to art, they apply to everything. And these are normally things that you're not taught in school, you might not be taught by your parents and for me not having these skills is really detrimental like i spent years of my life wondering about things that i should be doing or shouldn't be doing and all the things that i'm trying to tell you guys these are things that have been really valuable to me so getting to the video for this week i want to talk to you guys about creating your own path or making your own curriculum in a way we're all self-taught not just about art, but really about everything. You might have had mentors or teachers in your life, which would have been great. It might have been left to your own devices to pretty much figure everything out. That happens too, and it happens very often. So for me, having gone that route, it's been pretty valuable knowing what it is that I need to focus on and just learning how to think about stuff and problem solve instead of being handed down just information and like just follow this. Like for a lot of years I did that. I went through university, I went through school. I never knew why I was doing any of that stuff. I just sort of thought that I have to go through it because that's all the information I had. When I was growing up, there was no YouTube. There weren't too many books about people saying what they did or just knowing about other people. So you were sort of like in a bubble. You only knew about what the people around you were doing. So in a way you were sort of condemned to walking that path if you didn't like it. So for me, I didn't like it. I went through it. I got nothing from it. And then afterwards, for a couple of years, I had to sort of deconstruct, well, what are these people telling me? What's not clicking and what should I actually do? So getting to the video then and creating your own path. Again, this is not just about art. This is about everything. And I'm going to try and teach you guys or sh just tell you a few things, share with you, not about so much about specifics and just do this and just do that but i'm going to try and instill in you a way of thinking because i think once you change your thinking and once you start questioning things and looking at things in a different way then the next time you have a problem or the next big thing that comes along you know how to do it you know how to deal with it you know how to make up your mind about it you know how to tackle it because you've done it before if i just give you a specific of just do this number one number two number three if i just give you things like that to do First of all, I might be wrong, which then if you just repeat what I just said, you'll be wrong as well. So I'm just creating a lot of people that are going to end up not where they want to go. Also, that's the type of thinking that the educational system gives people like people are just given do this, do this, do this. So they that creates so many people that don't know how to learn once they're finished. So I think that's actually very detrimental to give people steps that might be wrong, that are untested, but just sort of seem like that's how you should do it. So I want to try and talk to you guys about how I think about making my own curriculum and how I go about thinking about new problems when I have to tackle them. So these are the actual questions from Christopher Phoenix, Jeremy Cart, longtime supporters, know him from the blog and from the videos. Thank you guys so much for sticking with the channel for so long. So it says here, for next Friday, I'd like to ask you how you put together a curriculum as a self-taught artist. So that's what I'm going to talk about, the thinking behind that. I'd like to schedule myself better, but I often don't know what to do next. I found good resources and I have some ideas of what I need to learn, but translating that into actionable steps can be difficult. In school, we are spoon-fed spoon each successive step. That's exactly what I was talking to you guys about. When learning on your own, we must put it together ourselves. So I'm going to try and show you guys how to deconstruct problems and make something useful from what you learn. Not just books and everything, tutorials, etc. All that stuff is useful, but really combining it, as Christopher says, that's really the most valuable step. Because once you learn to do that, you can do that for anything and you have to do it constantly. Especially as an artist where you might be called upon to do something that doesn't exist or something that's based on something, but you need to add to it. So really deconstructing what is it that I'm looking at how can I reconstruct it? How can I add to it? What would go with it? What wouldn't? What should I take away? What should I put in, etc. That's exactly the same type of thinking as the thinking that you would need to actually become an artist. So that whole cycle repeats constantly. So continuing on, what's your advice in constructing a self-teaching curriculum as a self-taught artist to learn 
what it is you want to learn. How do you go about it in your own life? Thanks again for the awesome channel. Thank you for the awesome comment. And Jeremy Kirk now, how do you structure your learning? So pretty much going through the same route. I'm interested to know about the challenge you put to yourself with making your own concepts. Can you elaborate more on that? So pretty much more of the same about learning. I have this monthly deadline that I put upon myself uh, where I should produce something entirely on my own, be it a character or whatever. But I always get frustrated as I get stuck as to what I must make. So pretty much the same thing. I don't know what to do. I know what I should be doing, but I don't know what to do exactly. Exactly the same question. Even though it's regarding something different, the actual thinking behind it is what makes the question. Okay, let's go for it, guys. All right, so let's get started with the actual video now without making it 96 minutes long, which is why I'm re-recording it now. So I wanna to talk to you guys about these specific points that I have for you here today. So first one that I wanna cover is that learning about art is learning about life, which is again why I'm not giving you specific steps. Because if I gave you specifics, if I just gave you do this, do this, do that, then all you'll be learning is just how to do those things that I just gave you. You won't be understanding the underlying principle of why those things are important. I think that if you learn to think like that about what is essential, why is it that I'm doing these things? And if you're able to make up your own mind when faced with a huge amount of complexity about what's important and what's not, that's essentially what art is. When you have like a landscape, let's say, or a portrait, really it could be anything. That's why it applies so well to it. Really with anything, you need to pick out what are the important features about this subject, how to subdue everything that isn't important, but have it support everything that's in front. That's exactly what your curriculum is like. What is it that's important to you? What are the things that inspire you that you think are essential? And what are things that will help to build those, but at the same time are not essential? I can give you an example. For me, I like making things look real and I like understanding why things look the way they do. I like the fact that there's math behind everything. I like the fact that I don't understand it, but I like the fact that it could be systematized in such a way that a computer could do it, which is why 3D packages are so awesome. It's because they can take the rules of physics applied to how we see things and they can make things look realistic, which means that if it could be put in numbers, if it could be made into an algorithm, that means that it can be repeated systematically by absolutely everyone. It means that there's, and this, in this case, there's no creativity or specialness involved. It's all just a set of rules that you need to understand and apply to be able to make things look realistic. Then you, you add your own interpretation of things, your own ideas, etc. That's what makes it special. But the actual visual part of art, which is what really what this channel is about, what we struggle with most, the visual part of art, just learning it, wondering if it's possible, that is understandable by a machine, by a calculator. If it can do it, you can do it. You just need to understand the rules and you need to apply them. That's all that's required. You don't need to be born with a special brain or any of that stuff. You just need to know what's essential and how to get there. So for me, let's say, I like making things look real, like I said, but let, I can't draw, I can't do line drawings at all. Like, I suck. Like I can't do cartoons, I can't do any of that stuff. Like my cartoons look like a two-year-old's cartoons which would be funny until people realize that, that I'm actually serious. Like when they first see it, it's like, oh, that's cool. Huh? And then no, I just can't do any better. So learning to make decisions without knowing what's going to happen afterwards, navigating a system that's incredibly complex and being clear about why you're doing certain things and what it is that you'd like to do in the end, that makes you able to move through complexity. It makes you able to cut off paths that you might want to explore, but aren't as important to you. So prioritizing, putting first things first is what is it that you'd like to be doing and what are things that you might sort of be interested in, but they become secondary. So focusing on your path, all those things become incredibly valuable because all the future problems that are, you're going to tackle in life are going to be the same types of problems. Should I take this job? Should I do this? Should I learn about this? Should I do that? Should I change jobs? Should I change careers? Have I been given the right information by all the people around me? Should I listen to everyone about everything they've been telling me? Or should I just sever all of that stuff, count your losses, move on? Those are the exact same things that you'll be applying to art. 
And that's why we move on to the second one. It's learn principles and not specifics. Again, what that means is that don't learn about or don't just view every problem as its own isolated component. Try and get general principles that you can apply to other problems from every single thing that you do. That's probably one of the things that I like best about art. Solve a single problem and find the general rule. Begin to be almost like a chess player in your mind about if I move this pawn here, what's it going to do? If I, if I begin like this, what does it generally mean that let's say this piece can only move like this or what does it, what can I, by the very definition of what it does, what can I also use that for? What would be a good usage for that particular move? So if you have the pawn again, the fact that it moves only one or two squares, what would make it most efficient? How could it support everything else? It's not just that one move that you're doing now of what should I do right now, but you're also thinking about the whole board all the time. So you're considering each individual thing, but you're also trying to fit it into the big picture at all times. To me, that's really the key behind doing your own curriculum is really just that one thing, apart from everything else in this video, of course, is try and generalize everything. Try, because otherwise you'll only be learning one skill. You'll be learning art. You, you might become great at it, let's say. You might be able to do the pictures that you want to, but you still will be confused about everything. About what subject should I be doing? Or what people should I be working with? Or what thing should I learn next, etc. There's many talented people that are very good at a particular thing, but because they don't generalize, they can't really apply and they don't grow as a person. Like really, when you generalize, you grow as a person because then you're able to see how you can implement into different areas in your life and you can change everything, not just one thing. So the more you box things in, the more you view them as isolated pieces, the more you limit your character growth. I view art as being able to just push everything and pushing yourself is what makes you be able to do more and more things. And I have an example of this. I have a couple students that I work with and Mike, one of them recently, we were doing a study together and I knew how to do what it is that he was trying to do, but I wanted him, I didn't want to show him the answer first, right? I wanted him to struggle with his own thinking process. It was a simple study, a simple setup, but really it's only simple when you're able to think about your thinking and change your thinking. So I gave him this problem and it wasn't helping him at all. I just left him with it and I was just asking him to think about what it is that he would do differently. I was asking him to look at his strategy of why he would attack the problem like this. Why would you use that tool? Why would you use that brush? Why would you do what it is that you're doing? What, what's the reasoning behind it? Because all of us, we are sort of stuck in habit. Most of us was just when you see something, you start in it the very same way that you would start in everything. So I was trying to break that habit from him and, and just sort of make him aware of what he's doing and make him think about what he's doing. So it took, let's say, five or 10 minutes of intense frustration of just leaving him there to just sort of try this one, try this one, that one doesn't work. Why did you try this one? Why don't you try that one? Maybe not. Why don't you try this one? Why, why are you trying all those other things? Of Just leaving him in that and just basically having him question, why am I doing all this stuff? And then when I show them how he could actually go about it in a completely different way. And then I asked them, like, what do you think about the way we did it now? And he said, if I hadn't gone through that, all I would have gotten from what you just told me is to use the soft brush. So basically what he's saying is that if you had just shown me, instead of letting me struggle with it, if you had just done it for me, uh, all I would have understood from it is Instead of trying different ways of thinking, instead of questioning my problem solving, instead of trying to break away from automated habits that I'm not aware of, that are probably limiting me in this area, but also in many others, I can just use the soft brush for this problem. So basically he's saying that he would have learned, oh, when you're faced with that same setup, with the same study, whenever you have a sphere with whatever behind it, just use the soft brush. That means that this, as soon as I change one component, the whole thing crumbles because then it's a, it's a completely different problem. Like, oh, I know how to do a sphere with a thingy, but I don't know how to do a cube with a thingy. So that's why the thinking behind it is what's most important.
Moving on now. What is it that you want to do? Like I said before, art is uber complex and there's many different rabbit holes that you could be going down. Depending on how curious you are, you might be learning five people's jobs. I think that's what I'm trying to do. I like doing 3D, I like sculpting, I like painting, I like learning about design, I like deconstructing and constructing stuff, I like illustration, I like painting, I like art, I like all kinds of stuff. So you need to be aware of what it is that you're doing. Some people are technical artists, they just like um, the technical side of it. They don't necessarily maybe like to create their own stories or they're more focused, let's say, on just getting things to look the way they need to look or just altering things in the best possible way to bring out whatever it is that's required. So they're technical artists. There's other people that are more idea based, but they might not be as good in the technical side of things. So you need to know or you need to understand that you'll never be ready for everything. You need to be comfortable with not being the best at everything. You need to be comfortable knowing that there's people that are going to excel and are going to be better than you in all kinds of areas. But there's going to be no one that's going to have your particular skill set. You need to know basically what makes you valuable. You need to know what it is that you want to do. Clarity is power. The more focused you are, the more you know exactly where you need to end up, the more you're going to practice those things and only the relevant things to get you there. If you're scattered, it's Miyamoto Musashi in his book, The Five Rings, says, it's better to practice one sword move a hundred thousand times than to practice a hundred thousand moves once. That makes sense. We all like to do everything. We would all like to be doing all those things that seem fun and exciting, etc. But you need to also be decisive, which means that you need to cut things off and focus and commit to doing one thing well. And then from there, like a spider, once you've gotten that one thing, begin to expand and to accumulate more. But you need to have one thing, one thing that you're really good at. So then you can actually demonstrate that you have gotten something done. If you do too many things, you're going to be too scattered. People can't possibly tell what your skill level is. They can't tell if you're good or not. They can't, no one can, can understand what's in your head. So when someone is looking at your piece, they don't see what you're seeing. So you need to really, that's why basically what the video covers up until now is it become aware of what you're doing and why you're doing it so that you can stop yourself from unconscious habits that are just driving you down this road and take control and think more about where you need to end up. That's really summing everything up. And just that one sentence, I could end this video now. Why is it important that you struggle with your problems? I talked about Mike earlier on. Why is it important that you go through your problems on your own or that you solve them yourself? If you're given solutions all the time, then what you learn unconsciously is that everything that you're trying to do has already been done. It's one thing that's in a way going to disempower what you're doing because if it's already been done, what's the point of you doing it as well? And you need to realize that that's not the case. When I was in school, I used to think that everything is sort of figured out. And there's no point in really doing anything because the doctor just knows how to do everything about whatever it is the doctors do. And then math guy knows absolutely everything about math. I had no idea that not everything has been done already that people actually know almost nothing, that nothing is explored fully, that everything is on the table. Everything is there for you to go there and do whatever it is that you want to do that no one else has done. What's required for learning though, is that you need to go through an ordeal. If you're just given the answers, you learn that everything that you need to do, you just need to Google it. You just need to, it's there like, oh, oh well, I can just take my time and just do it some other time because it's there. I can just look at it anytime. That's not really true. Most of the things that you want to do or that you want to be doing, they haven't been done yet. There's a very finite amount that's been done and there's a huge amount that's just there for you to go and, and do. There's places for you to explore that have never been seen. When you go through an ordeal and do things the hard way, what you learn from that implicitly is that, well, whether it's been done or not, it can be done because I'm not really sure how much of what I've done has been done before and I'm not really sure how much of it is easy or hard. I just know that it can be done. So really what that enables you to do is that whatever it is that you decide you're going to do next, you know it can be done. You've done hard things before. This isn't the hardest thing you're doing. You've done this many times before. And this is also part of what's called the hero's journey. If you look that up on YouTube, Elliot Hulse has a great video on it. Just look up Elliot Hulse hero's journey. If you look that up, 
it's basically the structure of all our stories of the young person just struggling, not knowing what to do, going through an ordeal, then becoming someone different and coming back and then being able to help others through their ordeal. It's basically the every single story that you've seen. It's Star Wars. It's every single narrative has that in there, it has that questioning, going through an ordeal, transformation, and then becoming what it is that they want to be. Another thing that comes from this is that to do something that you can't do at the moment, something that you can't currently do, you must become someone that you're not. That makes sense, right? The people that do the thing that you want to do, they're a different kind of person. They know what you don't know. They do things that you don't do. So for you to be able to get there where those people are, you need to become a different person. Most likely you have to become more disciplined. You have to sacrifice time, you have to sacrifice your leisure, you have to get rid of things that aren't supporting you and you have to become more productive. You have to become more focused. You have to do things that you're not doing. And by doing that, you can become someone that you're currently not. So going through an ordeal, that's really required for any sort of transformation. And it also going through an ordeal, actually just on a, on, on a brain level, on a neurological level, going through an ordeal reinforces the connections that you're making a lot more so if you're just again going back to mike if i just shown him how to use the just use the soft brush for this mike that would have taken two minutes and the impression the number of connections that that would have made in his brain would have been minuscule that would have been pruned the next day your brain, unless it's something that's required for your survival, unless it's something that's incredibly important, your brain is going to get rid of that. So easy come, easy go, right? The easier something is, the easier it disappears. If you've seen a tutorial yesterday and let's say you found something that's incredibly exciting or incredibly empowering, like you just found a way to do something, that's most likely going to stick with you. Or if you had to like really fight to learn something, like you were trying this drawing and you tried it like 50 times and then you finally got it, chances are that that 50th time, you're never going to forget that. You know how to do that problem. But if it came easy to you and if you've done things that when you were a kid that you really excelled at and you were just sort of doing them without even caring. When I was a kid and I was doing, I was lifting weights, it was just easy. Like I got big easy and I was lifting big weights. It wasn't really exciting. It wasn't that big of a deal. After a few years, I, I quit because it was just boring. I, I knew how to do it. I was doing it. That was sort of it. The harder something is, then later on when I gained like 20, 30 kilos and I got fat, then it was super exciting because I had a problem now and I had to fight to get rid of it. And ever since, I've, I've not been fat and I've been training consistently after. So it takes an ordeal normally to reinforce something in your mind and also to make those connections lasting. I've talked about brain stuff a lot before. Um, there's a lot of posts on the blog. I recommend you check those out. Okay. Next one, looks a bit confusing. Know you can, okay? Know that you can do it too. And see it done. See, see other people that have done it. Look at professionals. Look at people that are where you wanna get to. And find their earlier work and see where they've started at. This channel, hopefully in about five more years maybe, will be a place where people can see, wow, this guy was terrible. And he's not that terrible anymore. So see it done. You can find Noah Bradley stuff on deviant art you can see some of his earlier stuff going all the way to what he's doing now find other people that are where you want to be you can find feng zhu student work to be honest that still looks alien to me and insane that he's doing that stuff but hey he's improved as well everyone regardless of what some start low some start high but they all improved you can get better as well that's really the point that i'm trying to make with this Work in faith. So know that you can do it too. Don't just trust the process. Know that you can do it. You're not different to everyone else. Your problems, just because it's you and just because you think that maybe you don't have something, you think that maybe you can't improve, you think you maybe are lacking something. Everyone else has that brain gene for drawing and maybe you don't have that. Maybe whatever it is that you're thinking, you're not really that different. Our, our biology, like we're all the same species, we're all the same thing. None of us are that different. If you can talk and you can walk, you can pretty much learn. You don't even need to walk actually. You don't even need to talk to be honest. I don't really know what it is you need. But whatever, whatever you think that your limitation is, you don't really have that. You're just making your problem bigger. You're magnifying your own problem. 
because you think it's you. But everyone, absolutely everyone, has the same biology, more or less. So you can do what they have done. Final caveat to that though is never assume. Never think that you're gonna get there just because you're seeing finally that you're improving. Never assume that just because you've gotten better that you're always gonna sustain that getting better. It takes each and every day for you to get out and do whatever it is that you need to get done. There was a comment on the new video where someone says that they can't, like it's so powerful to just do the right thing. Yeah, that's all it takes, just do it daily. That's how you get there. Never assume that you're there. Never, never be entitled. Never assume that, yes, I will get there. That, that is not an issue anymore. I have seen the process. I know how it's done. Unless you repeat it each and every day, you're going to stop and other people are going to keep going. So you have to keep going. So know that you can. See it done by others. Work in faith, meaning trust the process that you and the problems that ev and doubts that everyone is having are not yours alone. Everyone has those. Absolutely everyone. You're not alone in any of this stuff. What's in your head is in everyone else's head. If someone's gotten better, they've just managed to just put their blinders on and just keep going and just get there. And again, once you start getting better, never assume that you're gonna just arrive, okay? Assume you'll, assume you'll fail. If that's what it takes, assume you'll fail. If you can't get to work, assume you'll fail. You'll never get there. And then fight against that. Use negative motivation. Use positive motivation. Watch the previous video, the previous video I just did. All right, final one. Work, analyze, evaluate, decide, repeat. That's the process that you go through all the time to decide whether something should fit in your cur curriculum or if you should get rid of it. So work, analyze, evaluate, decide, repeat. Or the Vader system, okay? So we're doing the Vader system here. So work is you need to be doing something. That's the most important thing. Even if you're doing the wrong thing, at least by doing something every day, you're reinforcing your discipline and you're getting more committed. The more you work, the harder it is to stop working, to give up. What was that quote? The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. So work is the first major thing because without building that work ethic, you won't be able to do anything else. Once you've started that, your next step is to analyze. What is it that I'm doing? And why is it that I'm doing it? Analyze what are the things you're doing and where do you need to get to? Then evaluate. Is this thing actually important? So first you find out what are the things that I'm doing? Deconstruct what it is you're doing. If you're, if you're practicing, let's say, figure drawing every day, why are you doing that? Why are you doing figure drawing? Okay, you decide that you want to be, uh, you want to be doing character work or you want to be able to draw from your, you want to be a comic book artist, let's say. So then evaluate. Is figure drawing useful to what my end goal is? In that case, yes. But let's say you want to be, a, you want to do concept art, you want to do environments, you want to do vehicles, and you're just practicing figure drawing because it's been given to you as one of the fundamentals. Is it useful then? And you might say yes, because it's something that people do all the time. Let's say it's a good tool for developing artists. But it might not necessarily be true. You might, if vehicles and environment and concept work is more important to you, then maybe you might want to look into 3D software. Maybe you want to look into engines. How do things move? How, does, how do things work? What is important to what it is that you're doing? You might, even though something's good, even though something might be a good tool, you might want to get rid of it. You might want to put something in front of it. So instead of practicing your figure drawing, maybe you want to start and you want to start practicing shape language. Maybe you want to start actually reading books. You want to find out how things work so you can make your work more convincing. You might want to change that for something else. So this is the evaluate part. Then you have decide. What is it that you're going to do? Okay, once you figure out that figure drawing may not be the thing that you should be focusing on, then decide to cut it out even though you don't want to or even though you want to keep practicing. Either cut it out or shift it back. So first thing in the morning instead of that now becomes, let's say, reading or it becomes practicing something else or looking at reference, building your visual library, finding out more about the world. And then you put the figure drawing somewhere at the end of your day after you've done everything else that you need to do. But what is important here about the decide part is that you have done something now to change what you were doing before. Without that decision, analyzing and evaluating are useless because, okay, I know I'm doing the wrong thing, but I'm still sort of kind of going to do this thing because it's useful. Like, 
everyone does it. It's one of the things that I should be doing. When you decide to actually do something, you, you take action to get rid of that item, put something else in. And then the final one is repeat. You're always going to be doing that. This is a loop. So this repeats itself constantly. Maybe not daily, but at least once a week. Ideally, maybe daily even. If you can sit down at the end of each day and figure out what is it that I did today? What are the things How did my work go today? What is it that I did? How long did I spend? Was I effective or was I just sitting there? Analyze. What are the things that I did? What are like the specific things that I've done? And then evaluate each and every one of those things. Were those things useful to where I want to get to? Then decide, okay, tomorrow I'm going to change this and I'm going to move that and I'm going to stop doing that. And I'm going to introduce this new thing. And then the day after or the week after, however long you do these, you repeat. Okay? the Vader system. So summing up the video as best we can. For Christopher and Jeremy, I want to say your guys' questions really warrant at least another video or maybe a series of videos just about how the pieces of art sort of fit together. Which ones should you choose? How to put them together? Which one comes out from whatever it is that you've built so far? What, what does it mean that I've done these things and what can I build on top of it? What are fundamentals? What are important things? So really those need to be covered in a different video. I can't put it all together. But what I've been trying to give you guys is just the thinking that will enable you to when you're making decisions about new things coming in, that you're able to make more informed choices about should I pick this or should I pick that? Why am I picking this one? Should I get rid of it? So that thinking, I think you can start and just implement right away with the things that you're doing and clean up most of the things that you've been doing. With a lot of us, a lot of what we need to do isn't adding more or doing something different. It's getting rid of stuff that we've already doing, focusing more on one thing. Practice one move a hundred thousand times. Summing up this whole video now, learning about art is learning about life. Problem solving is the same for whatever it is that you're doing. Being able to make, to make up your mind, to make good decisions with imperfect information and with very complex, vague and unclear consequences that might follow, that's something that you'll have to do throughout your whole life. When you're learning about art, if you generalize and learn principles and not specifics from building a skill, you'll be able to learn about life. Next time you're somewhere in a situation and it's unclear and you don't know what to do, you are better informed and you have a better developed character because you're applying everything that you're doing to everything else. It's like a tree that's sort of spreading out. You get one thing, but then you spread it out across the whole system of a tree. You don't just keep it there. It's like not just, oh, this is, I got nutrients and I'm going to make one leaf. I'm going to grow just one leaf from my tree head. It's no, you get everything and I'm going to feed all the leaves and then who knows how many more you're going to get from that. Instead of just making one new one, you feed all the separate little branches and they each maybe sprout one. You end up with a lot more. Learn principles, not specifics. Whatever you're doing, generalize it. Find ways to apply and to implement into different areas of your life. And don't be stuck in one thing. Don't just look down the rabbit hole and like, this only applies to this. Think of the soft brush. Think of what I, the story I told you about with Mike. If you had told me the answer right away, all I would have gotten is use the small brush, use the soft brush and problem solved. But then next problem that's very similar, but kind of sort of a little different, I know what to do. No idea. What do you want to do? What is it that you want to focus on? What is the output of your work that you want to have ultimately? What's the impact you want to have? What is the thing that you'd like to be doing and go for that? Don't do everything else as well. Put those things, put them on the back burner or just move them down the ladder and just focus on the more important things. Don't be distracted by everything. Go through an ordeal. The harder something is, the more connections you create in your brain and the better chances are that that thing will stick with you for the rest of your life sometimes even. Easy come, easy go. If it's easy to learn, if you just are sitting there and you've been through 12 hours of Feng Shui tutorials, chances are you're going to have like 12 minutes left on the next day. But really find something that solves an important problem for you or you struggle with something for six hours and then you watch five minutes of a Feng Shui video and you see how he does something and you're like, whoa, you get to keep all those five minutes 
plus your six hours of struggle that you've had before. And that remains with you afterwards for a very long time. The more emotionally anchored something is, the more impactful it is, the more exciting, the more difficult, arduous, the more emotional gravity something has, the more it sticks in your brain because memory is closely related to emotion. So the harder it is, often the harder it is and going through an ordeal the more pressure you need to exert on yourself the better you need to get the more likely it is it's going to be transformative to you so don't be afraid of hard stuff know you can see that others have done it work knowing that you can do it as well and then never assume that you'll actually get there never assume that it's easy that it's granted to you that you're entitled to it and finally the vader system work analyze evaluate decide repeat be doing something each and every day. What are the things that you're doing? What are those specific things? Just listing them. Not really thinking about it, but what is it that I did today? Evaluate each and every one of those. Okay, those things that I did, was that important? Was this important to where I need to get to? Could I get rid of that? Why am I doing this at all? What, what, that makes no sense. This is the kind of stuff you need to do. Once you find those things, once you've evaluated them, then you decide, okay, this makes no sense. I know people say it might be good for me. I'm going to cut it out though. I'm going to replace it with this. Decide. Without action, nothing happens. And then you repeat. This is going to be an endless cycle. Anything new that comes to you, whenever you're deciding, should I watch this? Should I buy this book? Should I read this? Should I dedicate my time to this? You need to then analyze, evaluate, and decide. Okay, yes, this fits with everything else that I'm doing. Yes, this will be useful for me and my long-term goals that I'm pursuing. I'm going to fit it in. I'm going to spend tomorrow 20, 30 minutes on it. And over a week, I'm going to get through it. That's it. That's really all there is. Okay. I hope this thing was helpful to you guys. I'm going to leave you with this now. This is what you signed up for. Men wanted for hazardous journey. Small wages. Bitter cold. Long months of complete darkness. Constant danger. Safe return doubtful. Honor and recognition in case of success. Okay. This is what you signed up for. This is what it is. And reading this, it sounds exciting, doesn't it? Go for it. If this video helped you, please help me out. Like the video, share it, post it somewhere, give it to whoever needs it. Send me your questions and keep doing what you're doing. I'll see you soon.